From applauding Nazis to backing an actual genocide in under a month. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. The premise behind this current onslaught and those which preceded it is that you can bomb people into consenting to oppression and apartheid. That you can abuse them into accepting abuse. The whole entire argument is that if you bomb and shoot and tear gas and beat and imprison enough Palestinians with enough aggression, eventually they will see the errors of their ways and accept the status quo you are trying to impose upon them. This is, of course, stupid, and it is, of course, a lie. The idea was never really to abuse Palestinians into accepting abuse. That's just the cover story. The real goal has always been to abuse them to the point where you can justify eliminating them. To push an inconvenient people into an impossible corner, and then when they push back hard enough, say, well, we did all we can, and we learned you just can't help these savages. They're going to have to go. Can't stop tripping on how fast the West moved from arming and applauding Nazis to backing an actual genocide. Israel. Our intelligence services had no idea Hamas was planning its attack on October 7th. Also Israel. Here's an audio clip from our intelligence archives of Hamas fighters talking to each other. If I had not bombed a hospital... I personally would refrain from publishing an easily debunked audio file of me talking to myself, pretending to be two different guys, telling each other Caitlin definitely didn't bomb the hospital. My favorite kooky conspiracy theory is the one where Hamas spent two years coordinating and training for an attack of unprecedented scale and sophistication involving motorboats, drones, and motorized paragliders in an enclosed area the size of Philadelphia, which also happens to be one of the most spied-on places on Earth. And this conspiracy by Hamas was carried out so successfully that even Hamas was surprised at how many Israelis they were able to kill and capture because their conspiring went completely undetected by Israeli intelligence those entire two years, despite being warned by Egyptian intelligence that an attack was coming, and despite the fact that U.S. intelligence was aware of unusual activity by Hamas on October 6th. Israel's being so obvious about wanting to do another land grab. The solution is always to move Gazans off the land they're on to somewhere else. It's like a guy at a nightclub pushing you and pushing you to drink a drink he handed you. At a certain point you realize he's probably not really interested in making sure you have enough to drink. Honey, I took down the Ukraine flag to put up the Israeli flag. Where should I put it? Bottom drawer. The one with the Black Lives Matter flag? Yeah, just throw it on top. Ah, it doesn't fit. There's too many other flags in there. Uh, Throw out the Me Too one, then. Not the Pride one? Whatever, I don't care. I used to think it's bad to detonate military explosives and buildings full of children, but then a really smart Israel apologist called me an anti-Semite, so now I think it's good. Israel apologists are seriously asking you to believe that the only reason anyone could possibly object to a government dropping military explosives on children is that they have an extremely negative opinion about adherence to the religion of Judaism. Oh, I see you think it's wrong to launch missiles into locations known to be packed with children. The only possible explanation for this is that you have a deep and profound hatred for the members of a small Abrahamic religion. Saying it's anti-Semitic to oppose bombing areas full of children is itself anti-Semitic blood libel. That's what you are doing when you associate the murder of children with some innate quality in Jewish people, instead of the violence of a specific nation's government. Israel apologists who are getting frustrated that nobody's buying their criticism of Israel as anti-Semitic routine anymore can thank the smear campaign against Jeremy Corbyn a few years ago. It opened a lot of eyes to how cynically that accusation is used. I'm always getting people calling me a Hamas supporter and saying I'm spreading terrorist propaganda these last two weeks. Before that, I was a Chinese agent who was spreading CCP propaganda. Before that, I was a Russian troll who was spreading Kremlin propaganda. I'm never just a person on the internet sharing their opinions because... Any opinions which go against U.S. information interests are propaganda. 
At a certain point, all the empire simp ad homonyms all start sounding the same. These dopes just have no argument and can't think anything they weren't told to think. I'm not a celebrity. I have no platform. I use the same free blogging and social media sites everyone else uses. People just share my criticisms of the world's most powerful and destructive power structure because they like what I have to say. And empire simps can't handle it. 